324. Daddy, can you open this for me? I woke to Addie, holding a pack of powdered donuts in my face. One that she'd pulled from the vending machine. I hadn't even realized I'd fallen asleep last night and I missed the slumber, having it now fleeted from me. Daddy, open this, please. Addie repeated. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure thing, sweetheart, I gruggily responded, sitting up and taking the small package from my daughter's tiny hands. I tore the plastic open and handed it back to her. Thank you, Daddy, she said, as she sat back down next to Bodhi. She shoved an entire mini donut into her mouth and then gave the following one to Bodhi, who was all too happy to accept. Once Grace and the girls were settled eating vending machine breakfast, I, I walked to the back door, removed the barricade, unlocked the door, and prepped my bow before scanning the area. After about a minute of listening and looking out the glass, I opened the window, creeping over to the line of dead bodies that a crazed janitor had made. I set the bow down and started checking pockets for keys and weapons. I didn't really think there would be any weapons because I, I figured the janitor would have already been dead if any of these people did have any. However, I did find all sets of keys to the other vehicles parked out front. There were two smaller cars and one big lifted truck. Sadly, none of them looked at first glance like they had much for supplies. Like these people got caught here and killed by the janitor before they knew what was going on. By the way, I still grabbed the keys and I planned to search each one. Returning inside, I noticed that Grace had already gotten everyone ready to move out to the van. You ready? I packed up some of the stuff from the machines in this backpack. Ready to get out of here. All the windows here make me nervous, she said, slinging the backpack over her shoulder. Yeah. I got the keys to all the cars up front. We'll get everyone in the van and I'll do a quick search out for the vehicles. Then we can, um... Then we can make like trees and get the fuck out of here, I said, walking to the front door and moving the barricade. I unlocked the door and held it open, looking out to the vans and surrounding area. Seeing no movement, I motioned for Grace and the girls to go. I grabbed Bodie's leash and a handful of blankets and followed them whole as they rushed to the van. As we got everyone and our supplies inside, I dropped the leash. Bodhi watched as it hit the ground and then looked back up at me and takes a few steps closer to my side. Surprised that he didn't immediately run off like he would typically, I knew that he understood his job as a team member and protector during all this time. I walked around the back of the van and opened the hatch. Bodhi promptly jumped inside and turned back to look at me as I closed it. Once everyone's secure, I make my way to the truck first, searching the bed before checking each set of keys so I found the right one to unlock the cab. Entering the truck, I do a quick search of the cab, and as I expected, beside the various country music CDs, there's nothing to use. Quickly, I step back, shut the door quietly, and rush over to the other two vehicles, the ones conveniently parked next to each other. The first I came up to looked just as empty as the truck I'd been in, but I thought to check it anyway. Inside the front of the car, there was little more than change in the center console and napkins in the glove box. In the back seat sat a children's tablet and a stuffed animal. I knew who this car belonged to at the side of those items. I checked the trunk and surprisingly found a gas can that was full. Hell yeah, right, something useful, I thought to myself as I set the can on the ground. Nothing else of use. From the last car, I found the most stuff. It looked like the couple had been in some sort of camping trip, and I acquired two sleeping bags, a box of Strike Anywhere matches, a few bags of chips, a can of beans, a hatchet, and a big multi-tool type bowie knife. I also grabbed the marshmallows and chocolate that were there, even though it didn't seem as useful. Little treats are always a good thing. As I closed the door on the last car, I froze. A booming roar blasted through the air, deep and demonic. It sounded like a, a bass-boosted version of the roar from the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. I scooped up all my treasures and I ran to the van. Grace saw me coming and hit the button to open the back hatch. I threw everything haphazard into the back and hit the button to close it and then ran for the driver's side door. I cranked the door open and jumped inside. Another roar bellowed out, filling the sky with noise. And as I put the van in reverse and backed out of the spot, Bodhi stood on his front paws in the center console and growled out the windshield towards the building. I slammed the van into drive and peeled out into the on-ramp and back onto the interstate. What was that? Did you see it? Grace yelled out as our tires met pavement. No, no, I didn't see it. I, I have no idea what that was, but I'm really sure I don't want to find out, I replied as we sped away. 
even though the interstate was still barren. I slowed down after about five minutes. I didn't want to wreck, kill us all, just because I was driving too fast and couldn't see through the fog. And after all, we'd survived so far. I'm glad I did. It's just as we came within about a mile of the city, we began to see vehicles off to the side of the road. This is beginning to feel more and more like a bad idea, Grace said to me as we passed the fifth vehicle off on the side. This one had all the windows shattered, and the following one we found was crushed. I mean, it was, it was truly crushed. It looked like it had a wrecking ball dropped on it. We stopped at the first stoplight, not because the light was red, but because we were met with more wrecked cars in the middle of the intersection. Stopping gave us a minute to contemplate an important decision that we needed to make. Do we drive around the pile up and deeper into the city, or do we turn around and head back in the other direction? Alright, I don't, I don't like this any more than you do. But we are going to need more secure shelter, at least something a little more substantial than this bow and the seven arrows we have left. I finally responded, motioning to the bow sitting next to her. We don't know how far this goes. We don't know what we'll run into later, and we sure as hell don't know what is making that roar back at that rest stop. <sighs> I hate this. <sighs> You're right. I really don't like this, but it's something that we're going to need to do sooner or later. Right now it seems pretty quiet. There's a gun shop just up the road. Then a few grocery stores near it. And at Dick's over there relatively close to that area too. She says, shaking her fist in the air. Exactly. Alright. We can hit all those without having to go very deep into town. And once we do that, then we can make a plan for finding somewhere to settle down and... and let it be somewhere secure and safe, I said. Mommy, I want my cup. Eddie yells from the back. Grace reaches back and grabs out a sippy cup, fills it with apple juice that she snagged from the vending machine. Bodie chuffs as Grace hands the cup back to Addie. And I press the gas to move around the wreckage and down the road to our first stop. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you so much for listening to tonight's story, whether it be an episode of something or tonight's podcast or tonight's YouTube. For all of you who are interested in seeing me do things besides uh, telling horror stories, I'm also on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mr. Creepypasta. I've been playing through Resident Evil the entire series with my sister-in-law for the very first time for both of us, so that's a lot of fun if you'd ever like to join me for that. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons, and you can always join them at patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta. People like Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chapinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, G Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Chance Burnett, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cal, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Barbara Masado, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Andrew Kirasuba Warnock, Bad Honey, Creepypasta Adam, Someone You Love, Brennan Wright, Said The King 56, and Somber Puppet. Thank you guys so much for your continued support to all of you on Patreon, you guys that are down there in the description and everyone else. And thank you all for listening and watching and being subscribed. Sweet dreams. <laughs>